Hi, my name's Eddie. I'm really passionate about getting everyone into tech, especially open source. There are so many paths into tech, and once you're in tech, there are also so many paths you can take within tech. So I'm always interested in how people got into tech and, and their journey and career through technology. So I decided to make a short series called Developer Stories. My guest today is Emma, and Emma is a mod, a maintainer, ambassador for Eddie Hub and there's so many amazing things like a YouTube channel on accessibility. Um, I'm not going to do Emma any justice. So let me hand over to Emma to do an introduction of herself. Thanks, Eddie. That's a great introduction. Um, yeah. Hi, my name's Emma, originally from the UK, but I now live in Sweden. And I've just completed a two year college course in full stack JavaScript development. And I'm about to start my first role as a software developer in August. That is awesome. I mean, I see you help so many people in uh, the Eddie Hub community and on Twitter and so forth. I think it's brilliant. Your expertise in React and JavaScript is so awesome. So I, you know, it's such a surprise to see that you've just finished studying and you're just getting your, your first role. And I, I love it how you're always helping people. So, you know, thank you so much and congratulations on the role thank and you. congratulations on finishing your studying. You must be like super excited for this, you know, finishing one chapter and then moving on to the next chapter. Yeah, I am. I'm not quite sure what to do with my time. I've got like eight weeks off now between college and starting my first job, but I'm sure it's going to involve lots of uh, helping on open source projects and helping out at, on Eddie Hub and that kind of thing. So thank you so much. I was going to make a suggestion of open source and you know, try and fit some <laughs> Eddie Hub in there, but it looked like, it looks like you beat me to it. So that sounds great. And hopefully you find some time for yourself to, to relax and recharge. I know you've had a, a busy two years studying mm -hmm. as well. My first question was, what are you working on at the moment? But I don't know if you've actually got anything on at the moment or are you trying to just do multiple things? And Yeah, there's nothing specific at the moment. I'm looking out for different open source projects. I've got a couple of projects in mind myself that I'd like to get started. Um, so I'm going to be trying to get those up and running. And I've also got my project that I did for my examination piece for college, which I also want to um, turn into an open source project once it's all marked and and signed off. So uh, yeah, a few uh, different projects in the pipeline. Well, that sounds great. If any of you watching want to follow Emma's journey and these open source projects, check out the links in the description below where you can find Emma's GitHub and Twitter. So uh, I would like to know a little bit more about your other projects, but maybe they're a bit secret for the moment. I don't know. My university project is like a, a map based uh, game where you go out around uh, different cities and there's questions like placed all around the map and then you kind of find go to that place click on it and get a question which you can answer from the environment um, so at the moment it's only like available in Stockholm um, because that's near where I live but obviously it'd be really fun if other people could contribute questions for other cities and other places around the world that would be awesome and then just a few like ideas I really enjoy um, learning more about accessibility but I find that it's quite difficult for junior developers and newcomers to get started because a lot of the material is very in-depth and uh, very complicated so I'd like to make some resources that are more suited for uh, newcomers new de developers to get started in web accessibility. Well, that sounds great. So we're really looking forward to that and we're looking forward to, to consuming it and also hopefully helping out as well um, on the open source project. So what did you do before getting into tech? Before I got into tech, I was actually a primary school and middle school teacher for 13 years for my sins. <laughs> I did really enjoy working as a teacher. I taught a multiple uh, different subjects, but it was a quite harsh environment, very loud, very noisy. Uh, sometimes a few of the children could be problematic and it was it was quite a tough environment to to be in so after 13 years I decided that it was time to do something else and the government had actually just uh, recently brought in programming into the curriculum and I was one of the few teachers that thought it was fun and cool there was a lot of teachers that were like no 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 I don't want to I don't want to teach that that's too complicated so I ended up taking on teaching programming to like several different classes thought it was in really interesting i started off with scratch and then started in even um in my free time looking at different uh, courses and web and then found web development specifically 
and uh, it all started from there really well that sounds like such a great story it's quite interesting how it was um given as an option most people decided not to do it and you went into it and, and loved it and now you've pursued that i think that's just awesome mm -hmm. so i think you kind of answered this already but i'm going to ask it again uh, what attracted you to getting into tech uh, we know how you went about it now so that's i think that's awesome so that was my follow-up question so we will, won't cover that one but you know, what attracted you to getting into tech for me i love problem solving but i also like to be creative and i just felt that tech and especially web development kind of pairs up the two really well so that I can use both my logical side of my brain and my creative side of the brain at the same time to like make make websites and things and that's that's what attracted me really I just thought it was really fun to do and uh, didn't want to stop once I'd started. <laughs> what was the first I suppose technology because now I know you're doing React and lots of other awesome stuff but what was it at the beginning that I don't know, was that light bulb moment or that hook that really got you hooked? Was it any particular technology? Um, was it, you know, doing JavaScript front end, back end? What was that, I suppose, that point where, you know what, I really, really like this? I actually really enjoyed the CSS at the beginning. I still, I love CSS even now. It can be frustrating at times, but I, I love that how quickly you can write a piece of CSS and you can see it appear on the screen. And I think that's, that really fast feedback is what kind of hooked me in. That's great to hear. I know a lot of people don't like CSS, mm -hmm. so um, that's, that's great to hear. What were some of the challenges you faced when you got into tech and how did you overcome them? I think the main challenge for me was time in the beginning. I was still working a full-time job and as a teacher that's like 50 hours a week at least. Um, and then uh, trying to fit studying in in the evenings and the weekends. In Sweden we're pretty lucky because they have quite a lot of free further and higher education. So I managed to, while I was still working, I, f I did lots of research online and found that they offer these like free two year courses in in-demand occupations. And so that's what I decided that is my plan. It was just the, I had to do some prerequisite courses in order to get into college and save up enough money in order to be able to not have to work full time whilst studying at college. So it was the year before I started studying that was probably the toughest year while I was working full time, trying to save money, so not going out anywhere and then studying every evening and all weekends just to try and take the courses that I needed to get into college. Definitely sounds like a lot of challenges, but you know, you power through, you persevered, and it sounds like you know, you've really come out on top. So that's, uh, that's great to hear. What are your current challenges at the moment and can the community help? I don't really feel I've got too many current challenges. I think the main challenge for me at the moment is wanting to do too many things and not having enough time. Um, so just trying to calm down. I don't need to learn everything all at once. I can take my time and uh, that's probably my main challenge at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of us do struggle with time in terms of we've just got too many ideas that we want to do. But it's great that the community does help, especially if you make it open source. I find the community can help. Uh, I mean, I couldn't manage all the open source repos that the ADHub Hub has without amazing maintainers like yourself who really help a lot with uh, pull requests. And even I understand some of the things going on as well, which is which is great because, you know, um, when they need someone who's an expert in React, you come in and you answer questions and, and help people and so forth and get that merged in. Um, and when it's something else like DevOps, you know, someone else comes in and helps um, me as well. So it's uh, it, it's great to have that. I know I learn a lot from everything that goes on as well. And I know it takes a time, so I really appreciate everyone everyone that helps. But yeah, hopefully on your open source projects as well, you can get some help too from the community to give you some of the, I guess, the content for the project as well. Uh, but also um, when it grows massive to help you maintain it as well. Good problem yeah. <laughs> to have. What resources do you use to answer any technical questions you have to improve and learn new skills? In the beginning, I spent a lot of time using things like free code camp and Udemy courses and YouTube videos, um, because that's what I found easiest to find information. Um, as I've become more experienced, I now find it that I can turn to the documentation for different projects to find answers to things. And also, if I still can't find answers, just, you know, tweeting it out on Twitter or posting something in Eddie Hub is usually a really good way to uh, 
to get a response and uh, get some help into solving problems. I think the key takeaway there is ask yeah. in public. And I think uh, a lot of people you know, send DMs to people and they wonder why they don't get replies. Or the worst thing is when you're on the other side and someone does send you a question and you go, oh, you know what, I've got a bit of time now, let me answer that. So you spend like 10, 15 minutes writing a big long answer and you send it and they went, oh yeah, I sent it to another people and I already got an answer you know, 30 minutes ago, so it's been fixed. It's like, thanks. I think it's important basically to ask in public and therefore it just solves so many of these, of these challenges that, that we have. Where do you find support in tech? It could be technical support or it could be encouragement, motivation, anything like that. Where are your places to get that type of support? Uh, my main go-tos are Eddie Hub. Um, that's the most supportive community that I've found so far. I've joined several different um, Discord communities and Eddie Hub is the one that sticks. Um, the others I go to now and again, but Eddie Hub I come to every day. So that's the, my main place that I go to so, for support. And then also Twitter is also really helpful. Uh, who inspires you in tech? This is a, actually a really hard question because I don't really have that many role models. Um, it's not something that I've ever had in any other area of my life either. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think I put people up on a pedestal. I just enjoy chatting with the people that I chat to and there's no no one special person that inspires me more than any other. So that sounds good. Um, you know, the yeah. whole community, hopefully, you know, the people that you collaborate with and geek out with inspires you. Okay, sounds good. I like that answer. Where would you like to be in the next few years? I'm really interested in accessibility and spreading the word on that. In the next few years, um, work my way up to becoming a senior developer with a speciality in accessibility and helping uh, newcomers to get more understanding in that area. I think that uh, makes so much sense. I think uh, accessibility is something that we don't spend enough time and effort on and uh, it's great that it's becoming more and more important as well, especially with have awesome people like yourself who are you know, focusing the, their energy on learning it and then sharing what they learn and creating content on it. Um, I always really enjoy your YouTube videos, always learn so much. What do you wish you knew when you uh, first started out in tech? There's probably not something I wish I knew when I started out, but I just wish I'd found it sooner. <laughs> That's really the main thing. I wish I'd found it like years and years ago. Uh, do you think having a career in teaching has helped you grow your Twitter and your YouTube and being able to you know, learn in public and share the things that you learn publicly? Yeah, I definitely think that it has helped me to have a sense of how to break things down and explain things clearly for people, maybe in a way that others don't, um, so that I can share the information that I know and trying to get that across in an easy to understand way, because I'm used to breaking information down for like 10 and 11 year olds to understand. And therefore I can think about, okay, maybe pictures will help this, or maybe breaking down the text into smaller chunks will help this. So I know the strategies that are needed to, to get the message across. That's great. So we can all definitely learn from that. I see people putting out great content, but it isn't digestible or understandable and requires kind of a bit more effort. And I think you know, a lot of people want to be able to have the information kind of, you know, almost spoon fed to us in, in, in a way. So it's great that uh, you've got that skill to do that. So we can definitely all learn from not only the content you put out, but how you put it out as well, which I think is uh, super interesting. What would you say to someone in the community who is currently stuck? And by stuck, I mean, maybe they're not sure if tech is for them or they might feel demotivated or they've not been able to secure an internship or a job. Yeah, if someone is stuck in terms of they're not sure what tech to do, then I would definitely say try out different things. There's so many free courses online that you can easily test different things out like within a few weeks or months and find what interests you. If you're having trouble getting jobs and things or internships, it really is just a case of networking. The more you put out on Twitter and on LinkedIn, the more useful information you put out there, the more people start to contact you and start to see you. And it's just a case of a numbers game, really. You know, you have to put yourself out there to be seen. And I'm, I'm not always the best one at putting myself out there either. So, uh, but that would be uh, my, my suggestion is just try to put yourself out there as much as possible. Build in public, like we've said. <laughs> Emma's being very modest and she puts out 
a lot of great content on, on Twitter and YouTube and also in Discord. So in the Anyhub Discord, we do have clients there. And uh, let's just say Emma's name's come up a few times saying, who's that super helpful person who's always helping everyone? I think their name's Emma. I'm like, yeah, their name's Emma. So um, yeah, it's, it's great. You, you, know, you, do, you do stand out by helping others and by putting out you know regular and consistent content. I think that's super important.